everybody. Welcome to Unscripted. I'm Pastor Chris today here with Pastor Matt and Pastor Paul on this Monday, Thursday. Yes, Monday, Thursday. Uh, and Pastor Matt's been uh, logging in a few times today. Uh, yeah, sharing the twice story. and got plans for at least once more, plus the live stream from the church at five. Five o'clock tonight for Monday, Thursday. And uh, right off the bat, I, I was thinking about this today that, um, man, you know, and I had even had some emails and I had seen some other churches like um, they were going to do virtual communion, things like that. And, and we had discussed that. Um, but, man, you know, in the seminary, they, they talk so much about how communion is this sacrament of unity. Like this is something, as you said earlier, Pastor Matt, um, being Lutherans, we are sacramentalists. Like we participate in communion each and every week, whether it be at the eight o'clock or the nine thirty and 11, right. but every week yeah. for the last you know, 30 years, uh, Holy Cross has had communion each and every week at different services. Um, right. We take it very, very seriously. I'm not saying other people don't, but it was a, a very, very tough decision to, to not um, to, to, to basically not do communion today on Monday, Thursday. Um, and, and we had even kicked out some ideas, you know, we had done the drive up communion, which worked very, very, very well, but with the yeah. stay at home order, uh, we just couldn't pull that off. We didn't feel right pulling that off. Yeah. We, that was our initial, that was our initial plan. That's even a little bit why when we did uh, drive up communion two Sundays ago, that was part of the reason we did it then was because we kind of wanted to test it out and make sure yeah. that it worked. And, you know, we had kind of that we're able to physically do it and organize it and things like that. And, and, uh, and it went great, I thought, you know, and so that was our yeah. plan uh, to do that tonight and we even had uh, talked about doing it uh during 11 o'clock on easter sunday as well but yeah, yeah like you said when that the stay at home order came down and you know yeah i mean it's we're considered essential and as long as we didn't have more than 10 people here at a time we you know i, I it would have been like legal for us to do it but you know at that point is that really you know, we decided to obey the spirit of that ruling as much as possible. And mm -hmm. so it just didn't feel like it was a good idea to uh, continue with that and to do another, uh, you know, kind of drive up communion. And right. so it's disappointing, though, to say to say the least, oh, really I was sure. looking forward to it and wanted to do it. So and then also, since it is Monday, Thursday, and this is the day you know, that the Lord instituted uh, communion. It does feel strange not doing communion. Uh, but uh, what were some of the thoughts behind not doing a virtual one? Can we talk about that real quick? Well, we can a little bit, although that is something that I go into in the vlog that I've been working on. Uh, oh, okay. So I kind of didn't want to go too much yeah, into that yeah. and, and repeat you. stuff. But I think you, you really did. I mean, I'm going to talk about an incident Thing that happened uh, in that vlog. And so, you know, it's not exactly the same, but I think you already did a good job of kind of explaining why, uh, which is uh, the, the, the actual physical communion aspect of it, the gathering together aspect of it, um, which is not to say that uh, we're necessarily against that or would never do it. Uh, mm. But that was, you know, initially why we spitball that idea and then kind of rejected it yeah. um, just because it, it does miss out on that togetherness. Um, now, one of the things, you know, I talk about in my blog, though, is that um, that doesn't mean we won't change our minds about that, mm. you know, uh, depending on how, how long things mm. go on. And, you know, it's it's OK to abstain from communion for a while. Jesus says do it often, but he doesn't define what often is. You know, often for us has been, well, as you said, every week, really. Um, uh, but if you were to come to the same service every week, then you'd get it every other week. And so for us, that's kind of the minimum of what we would consider often. But to be honest, he doesn't define it. And, and other churches define that differently. Some churches only do it once a month. Uh, some churches only do it yeah. two to four times a year. You know, now to me, that's not often. But again... Churches. 
yeah, it's not defined. So, you know, can can we go a few months without having communion? Well, that stinks, but but yeah, we can actually. Uh, and it and and because it's uh, the things we receive in communion, the and I'm not necessarily talking about the body and blood, but but the things that his body and blood gives us, the forgiveness and the new life. We, we still receive those in other ways as well. So it's not like we're depriving ourselves of forgiveness. You know, we still receive forgiveness when in the words of, of absolution, you know, in confession and absolution. We still mm-hmm. receive forgiveness by faith when we hear the gospel, you know, and believe it, you know. So, so can you abstain from communion for a while? Yeah, you can. I mean, it's not ideal, you know, but, but you can do it. Uh, so... But for how long? I don't know. You know, so, so could, have, the, could the point come where we reconsider? Absolutely, it could. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. We do have breaking news, gentlemen. We have breaking nope. news into Uh-oh. the hotline. I see uh, someone, uh, a certain Kyle Williams is on the right. feed. And Kyle Williams and Amber Williams, uh, well, Kyle did nothing, but Amber Williams delivered uh, a healthy baby boy uh, this morning. Uh, beautiful, beautiful baby boy. And his name is John August Williams. Breaking news. Right. Also, not to be outdone, we love Kyle and he's part, and Kyle and Amber, uh, part of Holy Cross. But also, someone else delivered a baby today, too. Oh. Our, uh, our chemistry teacher over at Holy Cross Lutheran Academy, Emily Hill, Tim Hill. Ah. Their baby, uh, I believe, this morning as well. So we have two brand new members of Holy Cross. Uh, so great. very, very, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, very uh, cool. You know, I feel great. like we have unintentionally given an update on Amber's condition every unscripted. <laughs> I'm not sure they. I'm not sure how much they have appreciated that, but I feel like we've literally talked about it every unscripted. Uh, so we need content. So we do. Right. That's right. So, we should have a prayer for those new babies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You gonna do it? Sure. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of children and for these very special gifts that you've given to these members of Holy Cross. As you, Lord, have continued to enlarge your family uh, the old-fashioned way uh, by bringing new children into the world. So we give thanks, Lord, for these two young people, and we pray for the mothers, that they would be restored to health quickly and that they would be ready to raise these children to know you and that we would soon be able to baptize them both. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So once, yeah, once again, congratulations to the Hills and the Williams. Uh, two babies. Good news in the midst of uh, some right. of this. Very exciting. Uh, Kyle, I was talking with him a little bit this morning. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, Kyle now uh, was saying that he's got a boy to join the team because currently there was four girls in the house. That's he's got right. two he daughters. Was a bit- he was a bit outnumbered yeah, he was, <laughs> in the house. Yeah, he's kind of, I mean, now it's two to four because the, apparently even their their uh, dog is a girl. So uh, now he's got somebody on his side, he was saying. So yeah. God bless. Congratulations to the Williams and to the Hills. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. You know, the last, the, most all of these unscripted, we've been having a prayer for the health workers for doctors. Yeah and nurses and all those kind of people. And I had followed up with some phone calls to uh, some of ours, especially Natalie Evers, who's one of the doctors that belongs to Holy Cross. And she responded with a text that I thought I would just let people know how much prayers are appreciated. Yeah. Thank you for your call. I just got your message. I appreciate it greatly. Pretty busy at the hospital, as you can imagine. I'm working all over the place. I'll, I will try to call you when I have a chance. Your prayers are appreciated. Thank you so very much from all of us here at the hospital. Natalie Evers. Yeah. Natalie. Yeah, that's great. Praying for you. She's, uh, I mean, she's at that emergency room right over there by the lower school, right? But, yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. And uh, she's a, I mean, ER doctor, like right there. She's in the midst of yep. it, man. For sure. Yeah, we have a lot of doctors and nurses connected to Holy Cross and other, uh, you know, medical field workers as well. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, radiology techs and whatnot. And 
Right. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we definitely, our prayers go with them. Dennis, um, yeah, Dennis, with, so. with my record of, with my record of injuries, uh, at home, I know most of the ER people up there off Reinhardt. <laughs> they recognize you. It's like cheers. When you come in, they just go, Paul. <laughs> he's got a, his punch cards, like one away from a free surgery at this point. I think. <laughs> There we go. Uh, I'm dating myself with that Cheers reference, too. Yeah. Probably only half the people watching got that. Yeah, that's not going to fly <laughs> in that confirmation class when it comes back. They're going to say, what's Cheers, Pastor Matt? I know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, so, hey, so I had something interesting that I just was curious what you guys' thoughts were as we're kind of going through this pandemic, which is uh, have you guys uh, started wearing masks when you go out? So... I, I really haven't gone out too much. Yesterday I had to go out. Um, I had to go, uh, I had to go to the store and, and uh, I, I looked around and I didn't have a mask. So uh, Jen had made one out of a handkerchief, but that was kind of hers. And, yeah. and so I put on, um, I put on one of my fishing buffs and uh, I went out and, and I got back and I called uh, Nick Bosco, who's a nurse and he goes, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's worthless. That's, you could have just wore a piece of Kleenex over your face. It's, uh, yeah, and then I was thinking to myself, man, you know, I really don't uh, have anything in case I need to go yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And, so it's, um, oh, go they, ahead. They here here at our house, they've uh, all instructed me that if I go out, I'm to have a mask on and. Betty's going to try and make me one. I think this afternoon. I'm planning on coming up and helping strip the altar tonight, and yeah. so I may be sporting that brand new mask uh when i come you what yeah. about a dark vader vader mask paul like you know <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right that's what i mean it's got a breathing for. apparatus I, in it you know i think that's at least <laughs> yeah. n95 or better <laughs> yeah. sure you know, that's it vader had to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's work. funny you say that johnson because uh because because of this yeah. This uh, uh, beautiful facial hair that I have, uh, a normal medical style, like N95 style mask won't work for me because, you know, it doesn't like seal up. So I've been doing the same thing uh, with those uh, kind of like oh. your fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I do double them up, though. Uh, so I get two layers there. But, you know, it's interesting that Nick said that because what I had heard was that uh, while obviously they don't do the job that like an N95 N95 mask does yeah. um, that they that they do number one help keep you from spreading stuff a little bit because the drop you know it's catching the droplets you know you're not uh, as you speak and breathe or even if you cough or sneeze it's not you know it's keeping it from flying out you know the way it would mm -hmm. and that it does maybe do a little bit to block some of those incoming as well obviously it doesn't block the virus itself you know it's just fabric but um, uh, so saw. yeah so interesting but i posted because i had the only one that i had initially was i borrowed one of my wife so it had all these like floral patterns and stuff on it so <laughs> so i ordered a bunch they haven't got in yet but i ordered a bunch with like skulls and american flags and stuff like that on them so you know america <laughs> so val fosberg says that uh duct tape works faster Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. probably does yeah mm -hmm. I, I saw in the on the uh, tv on the news they were showing a lady who did it with a long sleeve t-shirt and mm -hmm. she, she took the t-shirt up around her mouth with the opening, uh, the neck part right up here, yeah. and then tied the thing behind and then pulled it over her head. And then that opening goes right around here and everything. Yeah. And then it's, it looks like a turban, but it, it looked pretty cool. Yeah. Well, so I kid you not, Paul, I've se seen that for years. And you know what it's always been used for in the past is like a like a ninja mask. That was like the joke way <laughs> yeah. to make a ninja mask out of your T-shirt. <laughs> uh, I think you should do that. Get you a black T-shirt, Matt, and yeah. go for that. <laughs> That's right. Go with a full on ninja mask. So we're talking. So, Pastor Mask, if you're Pastor Mask, <laughs> Pastor Matt, I didn't mean to. That was unintentional. Uh, Pastor Matt was just saying, uh, "What are you? Or if you're going out in public, are you wearing masks?" Uh, Dennis McGavick, the office uh, guru, said that he made some masks from old VBS T-shirts to share with nursing home workers. Oh, oh awesome! Because his cool. uh, w wife is uh, works at uh, one of uh, oversees some of those. 
<laughs> Renee Hayes said we could just use some old VBS costumes. Probably a good idea, yeah. Probably. Uh, so the craziest one that I've seen, and a little edgy for unscripted, but is uh, bra cups <laughs> that people cut out and add. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should pre-record these. <laughs> you wouldn't wear that in public, guys? You wouldn't go out with one of those? I probably, no. probably wouldn't. No, probably no, not. Probably not. Uh, but they are recommending if you go out in public, uh, obviously, to wear masks. My question was, I could, I, I don't even know where you find them, you know, to wear them uh, at this yeah. point. Okay. I and certainly you don't want to take away from, uh, you know, medical workers and, and, and people that need the N95s. But uh, one of the questions I wanted to shoot out to the public are, uh, are you wearing masks if you, when you have to go out? There's certain times you have to go out, right? Uh, certain times you have to go shopping. Certain times you have to go do things. Uh, uh, Chris Kucher wore a mask for the first time when he went to uh, Home Depot. Uh, that's what he was saying. But yeah, um, he also says your two layers of protection is no protection there, Pastor Matt. Uh, your your reverse engineered buff is not going to cut it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm curious. So, so Nick, if you're watching. Um, so how does that differ, though, from these like homemade masks that people are making? How are those more effective, but like uh, a, a double layer buff is is not? I'm just curious about that. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, yeah. Let us know, Nick. Um, a couple other things. Uh, and Vicki Baki, um, uh, she said, can you have communion at home and with everyone have their own bread, wine, and juice and take it at the same time? Maybe you said something and you missed it. Yes, we did talk about that. And, right. um, we are, not and I talk about that on my vlog, which should okay. be up uh tomorrow assuming i finish the editing today maybe yeah. it's, it will be saturday but if you're just so, joining yeah, i'll up. deal with that in depth in my uh, video log this uh, week my wife just sent me uh, from the other room <laughs> apparently she can hear my loud mouth uh she just sent the cdc shows you how to make a face mask in 45 seconds uh so we'll have to put yeah. that up she did yeah. make one man she wasn't kidding around she, she yeah pretty good. yeah lana's made a couple and then our neighbors made some ones that look like i mean she busted out the sewing machine they look super professional they got the folds in them you know and everything wow. so wow uh all right uh so have you ever been i i wanted to share some good news today too besides mass uh and i also thought it was funny that um <laughs> your post today pastor matt when you said uh uh <laughs> I, I offered to share some toilet paper with people and, you know, what kind of world do we live in where that's yeah, like, I refer to it as, Oh, that would be a nice gesture. If yeah. You did that. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. We live in a world now where giving a roll of toilet paper has become a nice gesture. It's a nice gesture. <laughs> <It's> sweet. <laughs> Happy Easter kids. <laughs> that's right. right. Like, uh, Chris, why don't you why don't you share the uh, what you had seen uh, with the lady oh, yeah. that had the bar? Yeah, so uh, I popped up. Um, oh, cool! And by the way, some people are popping up uh, different versions of how to make your own mask. That's cool. Yeah. Um, th um, <clears throat> and anyway, uh, there was this. You, you've been to like restaurants or bars, a lot of in touristy areas where they have the dollar bills like stapled to the walls and stuff. Uh, you ever seen that? Like they're, they're really yeah. prevalent in the keys and, uh, and uh, you know, anyway, you go there. And, yeah. People and leave it, them as like, not it's the opposite of a souvenir. I don't know what, you know, like, right, yeah. Right. Well, usually they write, them, usually. From, they write a note. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or sign them or whatever. Right. In today's good news, uh, there's this, um, touristy, it was a restaurant slash bar, and it's in this island, it starts with a T, but it's in, in Georgia. Uh, and they have been open for four years. And from the beginning, people from all over the United States would travel to this place and, and they would staple up and leave a note, just like Paul was saying, they would leave a note. Um, and so the restaurant got crushed from Corona, like, you know, because people aren't traveling and it was 90% tourism, you know. And so the, the owner of the bar and the restaurant said, wow, I, I wonder what I can do to help my uh, employees out. And she goes, uh, well, I got a lot of time. 
So she went and removed all the dollar bills from the, um, from the walls and the ceilings. And there was 3,700, over $3,700 in $1 bills on the wall. And she divided that between her main employees. And she said it took her like, you know, a week <laughs> to go through and do all that. Yeah. But she was able to do that and help them pay some bills. And I just thought, man, that was such a cool story. You know, the, the yeah. owner certainly is taking it on the chin. The owner certainly could have, you know, and rightfully so could have kept that money for herself, but, you know, did a really cool thing. And she was telling the story that like when she's ripping the dollar bills off that a lot of them were stapled and she had to tape them together. And stuff. Yeah. And she said, she said, I read what you sent out on that. And she said that uh, some of them had 12 staples in them and they had yeah. to be real careful pulling them off. And then she spent two days after she got them off, just cleaning them because they'd been yeah. up there on the wall and the ceiling for years, you know? Right. So she was wiping them off and getting them clean and I then you physically can... handed the exact ones to her employees. Yep. Yeah, you can literally throw money into the laundry, right? I mean, I know that's not what people mean usually when they talk about laundering money, but I think it can lit like it is like a clothish kind of yeah. paper. I think you can literally just wash it uh, yeah. when it's I dirty. I know that some of mine has gone through the wash when oh, it yeah. gets left in a pants pocket. Exactly, Absolutely. and it doesn't get destroyed. You know, it's no, amazing. No, yeah, it's not like a tissue. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> That gets, yeah, goes all over your washing machine, yeah. of course. I just thought that was such a really, really cool story in a time where, you know, uh, we're talking about Monday, Thursday, we're talking about loving uh, others. Like, you know, we talk about the great commandment uh, that Jesus um, gave us, you know, and that God gave us that we love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mm -hmm. mind, but we also love our neighbor as ourselves. Like those two are very, very close to you know being two of the most i mean they're the most important commandments that god has given us and i just yeah. thought man i'm seeing it kind of play out practically in a lot of different realms that i didn't necessarily expect it to play out in and i think that's really really cool yeah yeah it is yeah, it's very cool nice to see that it's always great you know people always want to focus on kind of the negative aspects. They want to focus on the hoarding or they want to focus on the, you know, people getting into fights over toilet paper or whatever. But the, to be honest, there are a lot of people that pull together at times like this and that really show love uh, for their neighbor at a time like this. And it's important that we, you know, talk about that kind of stuff and uh, not just all the negative stuff. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, so uh, tonight then, five o'clock, uh will be isn't it five o'clock Matt? Uh, it's at five o'clock yeah and it, it you know it, it'll be a, an abbreviated service compared to what it normally is but we'll uh read through some of the liturgy uh together that we normally would do uh have a few scripture readings and then uh and then we'll do the uh kind of the i'll call it a ritual the the, the rituals uh stripping of the altar we we strip the altar and stage area bare um in this case of everything except the tomb um uh and uh we and, and we do that in preparation for uh good friday okay you know, uh i as we approach good friday i was remembering it was a number of years ago already um when they uh there was somebody that was being interviewed on uh, a news station, and I can't even remember when it was or who it was, but the, the gentleman, it was Good Friday, and the gentleman that was being interviewed said, you know, it's amazing to me that we still remember this day when uh, a few men uh, brought the biggest hoax in the world to happen. Uh, and he was, he was claiming that the crucifixion never happened, yeah. you know, and, uh, and so, you know, then, you know, he's going, just prove it to me. Uh, right. And I, I had to think about and I when we're as we're preparing for Good Friday now and the fact that we're not going to be able to get together and, and worship together. Um, I was thinking about uh, Thomas, who wasn't in the room when Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to the mm -hmm. disciples. But then the next week he was there. And in between there, the disciples tried to tell him Jesus rose from the dead. He was dead yeah. and now he's alive. And he said, I'll believe it when I see it. 
You know, you got to show me that. And yeah. uh, Jesus had uttered words that have been so important to us as believers. He said, uh, you believe, Thomas, because you've seen it. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Uh, and that really applies to us today. Yeah. We haven't seen it, but we yeah. believe it. Yeah, we have that blessing. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> hey, I know that uh, we're going to, you're going to be, <laughs> this is, you're doing quadruple duty today, Matt, because you're logging on at a bunch of different times yeah. and really, really cool. I, and I'm glad we were able to do that. Um, but did someone have a verse for us? Because we're going to probably check out here in a couple of minutes because we'll be back at five o'clock uh, with Monday, Thursday. And then back tomorrow night uh, for uh, Good Friday. Um, and then, of course, uh, all the services on Easter as well. Yeah, I, um, uh, I picked out a verse uh, that I thought we could share. Um, Matt was saying maybe we share a verse that's not necessarily directly re uh, related to the Holy Week. Uh, you know, the Passion narrative out of Matthew and the other Gospels. But in the first part of chapter three of Galatians, the apostle Paul starts out and he says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. He said, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the spirit? Are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Are you experiencing so much in vain as it really was in vain? So again, I ask, does God give his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your belief and believing what you have heard? In so believing, you become children of Abraham and are counted as righteous. Uh, to me, being home this whole week, you know, and you end up with more time to meditate and think about things. And you think about this whole thing of we're believing what we didn't see. We're believing he was crucified. We're believing that he was risen from the dead. And uh, I have no trouble getting excited about that. But every once in a while, you wonder, how did I come to believe? And what yeah. the Apostle Paul points out there is you believe. And in their case, he said, you all have seen it. These are people he was writing. People or have heard it. Excuse me. Have heard it from people who saw it. And so. Uh, we have that opportunity to believe, even though we haven't seen, uh, and that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. It reminds me, Paul, of that other verse uh, that says, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when we, that's why we believe the word of God is effective. When, when we hear it, God works through that word to create faith in, in our hearts. And so, you know, in that, what you just read, it said you, you believed because you heard, or you believed what you heard, right. you know? And right. so, yeah, uh, that's why we believe because we heard it. Uh, we heard it through the word of God. We heard the gospel and, uh, God uses that to create faith in our hearts. Yeah. And yeah, that's Johnson. an oh, awesome yeah. word for today. Um, and a reminder, uh, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, I've thought about this a lot. Like, what would my faith have been differently? Uh, would have been a different type of faith if I would have been born, you know, 2,000 years ago, if I would have seen the things that, that um, Jesus did. But, you know, a reminder that even the people that were closest to Jesus, like, you know, ended up denying and falling away at some point, you know, yeah. like. Uh, and I think that's why grace is so important, you know, and that's the thing I have to remind kids all the time that, you know, so many times we want to tie our faith to our emotions. So if we're feeling good, if we're feeling spiritual, if we're feeling close to God, then, you know, like, well, we, we have, we've got it figured out, you know, and then if we're not, if we're depressed or anxious, like, why is God not showing up? And the good news is that. God is constant, you know, God is outside of our emotions. He's with us through all that. And, and that's the reminder in this season that no matter, you know, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling bummed because you're an extrovert and you're trapped in a house, you know, like the Lord is with us through all this, you know, he, yeah. he is with us. And, and that's what I have to, you know, sometimes you have to preach messages that you yourself have to hear. 
um, you know, I needed to, I need to hear that, you know, um, yeah. my daughter needs to hear that. Uh, my family needs to hear that. Like we need to be reminded of that, that our, our faith is outside of our emotions and it's tied to a, such a, a big God who loves us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. That's good news. That's why we call it the good news. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, hey, thanks for uh, joining us today. If you're just logging on, um, you can go back and listen to the last few minutes uh, of all this. Um, but let's see, uh, somebody should pray for us because we got to get uh, reloaded and ready to go for Monday, Thursday tonight at five o'clock. So, yeah. Sweet. You know, and I was just thinking this morning, guys, It <laughs> the two of you have, like I have, have experienced Holy Week other years, you know, and this morning I got up and I thought, you know what, it really feels like Holy Week because I've been like rushing to get to one Zoom meeting after another Zoom meeting to do <laughs> something there, something there. It's like, it's really pretty busy. Right. Yeah. That's so funny you say that, Paul, because I felt the exact same way that like, you know, everyone's working from home. You, you should feel like less busy, but I don't feel any less busy. In fact, like, I'm still thinking, like, I don't know when I'm going to have time to edit this stupid vlog to get it up by tomorrow. And blah, blah, blah. like, I just don't like, yeah, like, where does the time go, man? It seems still just as full as it ever has. Well, yeah. and we've got, uh, I mean, it's a little different with my high schooler. She can kind of handle, uh, but, you know, my middle schooler needs a little bit more help with homework, too. So, you, yeah. you know, you're kind of become like teacher god bless teachers is what i want to say at, at the end of all this i am taking all my kids teachers a gift basket <laughs> right. like they are getting i will never ever 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 question a teacher in my life not that i ever i, I was one of those people but my lord yeah. you guys are amazing god bless teachers yeah absolutely all, all right. right uh hey, who wants to pray us out uh, yeah, I can pray us out. So, yeah, let's pray. Uh, Father, we continue to thank you for all the blessings that you pour out upon us. Lord, we might not always think of those at a time like this when it seems like we've had to give up so much. But, Lord, we know that you are still showering out those blessings upon us. You know, those moments of joy, those, uh, uh, those moments of triumph, those moments of peace, Lord, are still blessings from you. And especially uh, today on Maundy Thursday, and as we, you know, are in Holy Week and preparing for that awesome celebration of Easter, we are indeed reminded of your blessings. We're reminded of what Jesus went through for us, just out of his great love for us, and of the victory uh, that was brought out of that. Again, a victory in which we get to partake even though we had nothing to do with achieving it. And uh, so, Lord, continue to remind us of those blessings and uh, to give us your peace, uh, not just this week, but even as we continue beyond Easter. And, Lord, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. Uh, God bless. We will see you tonight uh, at 5 o'clock for Monday, Thursday, tomorrow at 7 p.m., uh, we will not be doing it unscripted tomorrow, but we'll have 7 p.m. Good Friday. And then, of course, the big one, this Sunday, 6.30, 8, 9.30, all live uh, Easter service uh, yeah. from Holy Cross. Uh, we will be there. And then 11 o'clock will be the rebroadcast at 9.30. So with all that, uh, for Pastor Paul, Pastor Matt, and myself, God bless everybody. Take care. Thank you, Chris Kucher, for making sure this flows over the interwebs. And uh, we will right. talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.